Okay, I want answers. I want answers and I want them now. I, I want to know who rolled out of bed one morning and just decided that the word fuck is a bad word. Wh what, what makes that a bad word? Like, why couldn't it be mailbox? Like, was it two guys sitting in a room just being like, let's think of words that sound foul. And one guy turned and looked at the other guy and he was like, fuck you. And his partner must have just been like, <gasps> I mean, I could go on and on and on about all the swear words, but I don't want my video to get completely demonetized in under a minute. But I seriously want answers. I want to know how bad words have been determined that they are bad words. I don't know, man. It's literally never made sense to me. All right, what is up guys and welcome to uh, uh, I, 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 I seriously didn't think of a fucking name. I don't really have a name for this yet, but it's something that I've kind of wanted to try for a while. I mean, I don't dare call it like the Wyatt's World show or anything. I'd have to kick my own ass if I did that. But basically, I've just got a list of events and topics that I want to discuss with you guys. Don't worry guys, that's just my fucking train pulling up in the driveway. So without further ado, let's hop into the video. Also, don't forget to use code Wyatt's World to save yourself a discount on all G Fuel products. So first off, we got the NFL, and we can't even ignore it. Let's talk about Sam Darnold. Yesterday, Sam Darnold was traded to the Carolina Panthers for three draft picks, which none of them were first-round draft picks, by the way. Okay, I want to start off by saying right away, good for Sam Darnold. I am fucking happy for Sam Darnold. From the moment he stepped foot in New York, he never had a chance, and he was this close to becoming another Josh Rosen after this year. Which would have been a bunch of BS if you ask me, because it's not Sam's fault. Okay, now this basically guarantees Zach Wilson in New York as long as Trevor Lawrence goes to Jacksonville. Which is fine, New York, I understand that, but it's not going to change anything this year. And Sam Darnold was what, the third overall pick in 2018? I've said it before and I'll say it again, if I were New York, I think I would have drafted Panay Sewell. Because part of me believes in Sam Darnold, clearly the Carolina Panthers do because they made the trade for him. I look at this as a miniature Stephon Diggs Buffalo Bills trade, and I mean that in the sense that I think both sides actually kind of won this. Jets are going to have a ton of picks coming forward, and Carolina possibly just got themselves a steal of a quarterback. And by the way, any Panthers fans who are upset about that trade, you guys are idiots. Okay, on to the NFL expansion. It's kind of older news, this was early last week, honestly could have been maybe two weeks ago now. The NFL season has been expanded from 16 games to 17 games. And I'm not 100%, but I think they dropped one or two of the preseason games along with the expansion. Okay, that's all fine and dandy, especially with the playoffs expanding. It doesn't hurt to add another game onto the season. I understand injuries are probably going to be more of a serious thing now. And if athletes are going to choose to hold out, it's going to cost an extra penny to get them to come back with that extra week of play. The football fan in me, I'm fucking ecstatic, dude. I couldn't ask for anything better than another week of football. But the number one question, for me at least, what the fuck does this mean for fantasy? Instead of 13 weeks, is it going to be 14 week seasons now? I think everybody's been in a league where they could have used at least one more week to get into the playoffs, guys. Okay, we got it now. Plus all the sports betters out there, me. <laughs> but the sports gamblers, especially the city of Las Vegas, are going to be ecstatic as well. I'm super eager to see how this season goes. I just hope the injuries stay down. And the last thing on the NFL is what the hell is going to go on with the first couple picks in the NFL draft. Okay, so we can assume that Lawrence is going to go to Jacksonville. Zach Wilson's going to go to New York. San Francisco's got the third pick now. If I'm San Francisco without a thought behind my head, I'm taking Justin Fields every single day, 365 days a year. I'm reading more and more that they're looking at Mac Jones. What the fuck? And then it goes down to pick number four, which is the Atlanta Falcons. And a lot of people think they're also going to take a quarterback, including myself. I think the right choice for each team would go as followed. Lawrence is going to go to Jacksonville. Zach Wilson should go to New York. Justin Fields should go to San Francisco. Trey Lance should now go to Atlanta. Look, I can see Denver or another team like that maybe taking a stab at Mac Jones a little bit later on. But in my book, I don't think Mac Jones should be drafted above Trey Lance or Justin Fields. Alright, up next we're going to talk about the MLB. Do the athletics suck again? Look, this is a theory my brothers told me for years, and now I'm starting to catch on too because I think I'm starting to see it. The Oakland Athletics are good for three year spans, and then they suck for like five. And I don't know if they can't afford to keep people, or I don't know if it's because they choose not to. Alright guys, as you can see, this is a look of the team's history. Okay, let's go back to 2007. Bad. 2008. Bad. 2009. Bad. 2010. Serviceable. 2011. Bad. 2012. Great. 2013. Great. 2014, pretty good. 2015, bad. 
2016, bad. 2017, bad. 2018, great. 2019, great. 2020, great. You guys catching on? Are the A's like just, what, what the fuck? Up next, are the Angels finally good? I can't think of a better team that is so bad. Other than the Angels drafting Mike Trout and owning the best player in the entire world at baseball, they haven't done shit. The last big thing they did is when they signed Albert Pujols to a 10-year deal, which by the way, apparently he lies about his age. Says he's 41 years old now, I guess the truth is, is he's like 44. I can see it, the guy can barely fucking run anymore. But are they starting to click? Okay, you got Anthony Rendon, you got Mike Trout, you got Shohei Otani, who he can not only throw 100 miles an hour, but apparently he can hit balls that go into fucking orbit. I'm pretty sure the Angels are like 3-1 and one right now. You guys deserve to do good. Mike Trout deserves to be on a winning team. And the Astros certainly deserve to fucking lose, so go Angels. And now let's talk about the Minnesota Twins. It's, it's the same thing every fucking year. I don't know how much you guys watch the Twins, but other than their first game meltdown, which they should have won by the way, the Minnesota Twins have looked absolutely fucking dominant. I can't say I'm shocked. Like I said, they do this every fucking year. They make statement after statement after statement, unless it's the Yankees. They'll hit the most home runs in the league, which that record won't be broken for a very long time, by the way. They get the entire state excited, yet they go to the postseason and they have lost 18 straight postseason games. I don't know, dude. Yesterday when I got done watching the Twins game, I was happy as hell. And then I thought to myself, wait, is this all going to come crashing down in two games again? I love you, Twins, but please don't disappoint me this year. I just need one win in the playoffs and I'm happy. The following program is once again being interrupted by an exclusive Wyatt's World G Fuel review. Uh, today I'm just deciding to say fuck it and we're gonna try the goddamn bubblegum. I'm so scared to try this and honestly I've just been putting it off. I, I don't know why, I just think it's gonna taste like fucking mouthwash. Oh my god. Dude, please tell me this is just in my head. It smells exactly like the fucking Oral-B mouthwash. Oh shit, bright pink. I mean, it's fucking bubblegum. What the hell did I expect? God, fuck. That's, that's the worst flavor I've ever had. This is exactly what I was scared of. To me, it tastes exactly like a bubblegum mouthwash. And I, I could just be having PTSD from a kid and bubblegum's ruined for life for me. Like if the classic bubblegum flavor is your thing, feel free to give it a shot. But uh, my rating is gonna be like a 4.6. G Fuel, I love you. You kill it on 99% of your products, but this one is a no-go for me. Bubblegum is not elite. On to basketball. I would have said this is the NBA, but it's not really the NBA. Congratulations to Baylor. Gonzaga, congratulations to going undefeated the entire season only to get your ass kicked in the championship game. One of the better 2016 Carolina Panthers impressions I've ever seen. At least they had lost one game before they got blown out in the championship. But who's the number one pick in the NBA? Is it going to be Jalen Suggs? Or is it going to be Cade Cunningham? Look, I'm all for Jalen Suggs, man. Not just because I'm a Minnesota guy like he is. And I'm sorry if they say it every year. I'm new to basketball, but I actually have faith in the Timberwolves in the next couple years. Now, I don't know exactly how basketball works in terms of shifting people to other positions, but I imagine if you had Cat, Ant, D'Angelo, Russell, Jalen Suggs, and maybe Malik Beasley all running at the same time, it leads me to believe that the Timberwolves could potentially be good. And the last thing I wanted to talk about in the NBA, it's a touchy subject to a lot of people right now, but it's Kevin Durant versus LeBron James. I'm just going to give my take on it. I'm a casual fan and I don't really know what the fuck I'm talking about. This is just how I see it. So if I say anything that triggers you, just feel free to tell me to fuck off. It, but to me, it seems like all of the diehard LeBron James fans blame Kevin Durant for every single failure that LeBron has come across in his career. You know, they're blaming Kevin Durant for holding LeBron back from more championships. They're blaming Kevin Durant for assembling super teams. Okay, I don't think that that's fair. That's the thing that kind of sucks about the NBA. It's either friends playing with friends or people wanting to go to winning teams. And if their current team won't trade them, then they just sit there and bitch and moan until they finally do get traded. Okay, what I'm saying by that is I don't think Kevin Durant expected James Harden, Blake Griffin, and LaMarcus Aldridge to fucking follow him over to Brooklyn. I think Kevin Durant went to Brooklyn. He knew he was going to have Kyrie, but I think he wanted to show people that he could win a ring without a super team. Like, unless there's actual proof of Kevin Durant fucking calling these guys and saying, hey, come to Brooklyn, I don't think it's fair to blame him for shit. Okay, Kevin Durant's a winner. They want to go play with a fucking winner. They're going to make a winning team. Not talking shit about LeBron either. I know who the greatest basketball player is. I'm not saying one bad fucking thing about him. All I'm saying is I think those who are blaming KD for everything are just a little bit over the top. All right, and the last thing we're going to talk about today is a movie review. So turn it off if you haven't seen it yet, but King Kong versus Godzilla. 
Okay, so this movie, it was, it was a good movie. It was definitely a monster fighting monster movie, but it was a good movie. But there's a couple things I didn't understand about it, and if you guys watched it, you can help me out. I mean, first off, there was like barely any human interaction in the movie at all. Like, yeah, of course, there were fucking people in it. But there was no development with the characters. Like, Eleven from Stranger Things is in it. She's in the movie for like a whopping five minutes. Coach Taylor from Friday Night Lights, I was super excited when I saw him walk into the screen. He was in the beginning. I don't think I saw him again until the end. Everybody on Kong's side was just sitting inside a ship the entire fucking time. The other thing I didn't understand about the movie is why were they fighting? Like, did I miss it? I'm pretty sure Godzilla just showed up and started throwing fucking hands in the middle of the ocean. Like, I- By the way, I was Team Godzilla, and he clapped Kong, like, three times in this movie. Thought it was kind of funny, though, how after every single fight that Kong got into, he had to sit his fat ass down for a little rest. <laughs> but that ending fight was fucking awesome, dude. I loved it. You had, like, a huge, huge brawl between Kong and Godzilla, and then Mecha Godzilla came in. If you guys don't know who that is, it's a big robot Godzilla. If you haven't seen the movie yet, and I just spoiled it for you, I told you not to watch this. But Mecha Godzilla comes out, and King Kong and Godzilla do a little tag team action and beat the shit out of him. And then they had that sick assist at the end where Godzilla fucking shot his atomic fire, and it hit Kong's axe, and then he fucking hit Mecha Godzilla and ripped off his head. <laughs> I don't know, it was a goofy movie, but it was pretty fucking good. Alright guys, and that is it for the first episode of the, the, the Wyatt's World talking about stuff, I, I guess? I don't, I don't know what to call it still. I really hope you guys like this video. My goal is to kind of make this an episodic thing every single week, so if you guys do like it, expect to see more of them. For those of you who won the G Fuel contest, I reached out to every single one of you guys. Please reply to me with your address where you want these things mailed. Quick reminder that I have a Q&A coming up later this week. Make sure to follow me on Twitter and tweet any questions you have at me using the hashtag Wyatt's World Q&A. That being said, guys, you already know the drill. Have a great rest of your day, and I will see you in the next video.